Hello, our sort of friends. This is Alex from Sodir. I know it's been a while since our first launch of uh, Clip Point Fortune. Uh, back before, I kind of like posted on YouTube and also on Reddit as well. I got a lot of feedbacks. Of course, I have to give a special thanks to James Elsmley, who gives me a lot of insights, suggestions, and also like a, a really, really good advices on how to improve our fortunes. So based on other source friends, which you guys mentioned a lot is regarding the scabbard. So now, today, here, right after the upgrading, we have this uh, clip point fortune, which are around like a 14th century, with the upgraded scabbard as well. Back before, on my right side, this is the older version of our fortune, and now I just make a compare with this newly upgraded as one. Well. This is the actually the back wearable, um, not a scabbard, a sheath. Very easy, simple, which uh, you can put it uh, in your back. But uh, now we upgraded it to this one. In terms of the scabbard, we use a lot. We get a lot of inspiration from our design from the Ocarist sword, which is a really similar ge blade geometry. Of course, stainless steel tip protection, which is really beautiful, right? Especially with this uh, Ocarist sword inspirational uh, scabbard right there. We use the back before our flora theme design to create this scabbard so which is a perfect match with this flower cross guard as well so now here it is today so personally it's really kind of like high-end fortune in my eyes when you have it it's really sturdy and it feels just good and also the as you can see the scabbard fitted the fortune pretty good in there uh, you know it's hard to design a scabbard for a fortune because it's kind of like you see the blade geometry is kind of clip point and also it's kind of like a different sizes it's kind of like thinner from the cross guard and also it kind of got get a wider from the clip point side so this is the huge difference and also a difficult part to design scabbard but anyway here we are today as we use adopted the former flora design on the scabbard which is making it really beautiful it's not genuine leather but it's a pure leather it feels really good soft and also um, comfortable in your hand of course, it can protect your blade from all those uh, dust erosions. As you can see, I can easily take it out, the blade right now. Huge compare with, uh, now I'm uh, making a comparison with the former blade. Basically, same blade geometries, but I gotta tell you that the thickness and also the weight of the blade, it changed. So now compared to the former one, if you happen to purchase the former fortune from our website, you will know that the back before the weight of the fortune without scabbard is around 1,140 grams, uh, something like that. But uh, this is uh, upgraded during the testing and also uh, of course getting all those suggestions and advices from all those sort of friends we can like upgrade the blade to make it more sturdy and also higher flex strength now the one in my hand is already 1280 grams a little bit heavier can like uh, around at least 150 gram differences but this makes a lot of differences in terms of cutting capabilities so as the battle ready portion you, if you are really digging into the heavy cutting, this is definitely the one you are looking for. Still use the spring steel, but now, back before, let's share some like a basic specifications. I mentioned the weight. Now, the length is the same as well, but the thickness of the blade, it changed a lot. For this one, this is a former one. It's still taper so much. From here, near the cross guard, is around like a six millimeters, the thickness. But when you move all over to the tip part, it's only around like one centimeters, one millimeter, I'm sorry. So this is a lot of distal tapering, distal tapering going on on this blade. That's why it looks really thin. When you cut in those 
let's say like a soft material, no problem. But I also tested back before the heavy material, like the dry bamboo and also other things, no problem. But uh, in terms of the durability and also the sturdiness, of course, the cutting capabilities now is enhanced. So this is the major differences compared to the former one, which I'm gonna do the testing later as well. But still, we use this uh, wheel pommel and uh, as a pin as well. Now I'm gonna give you guys a close up like this. There we go. I'm pretty sure you can take a closer look at all of the pin pommel right there and also the grip sections right there is 11 centimeters. Uh, not changed at all. Now you can take a closer look at all of the details of the cross guard with the flower design to match with the scabbard. Like what I said, we kind of adopted some uh, inspiration from the Ocarus sort from the Lord of the Rings as well. So, which make it really a good collection. And also, uh, like what I said, it's a bed already sort, well sharpened. I do mention that this will taper this one for this newer version is six millimeters the thickness still the same now we move all the way to the clip point right there is around like a three point millimeter and also we move all over to here it still has like a two millimeters so it's still this will taper pretty good now with more flex strength that's what i can, can give it to you now and uh with all the this tapered with the weight the point of balance goes from back before six centimeters now to around 10 centimeters. That's reasonable, right? Especially with the like uh, uh, much heavier blade itself. So before I give all those conclusions or I do all those cutting tests, uh, here's my thoughts because I know all those sorts because I personally like uh, in the design and also to kind of adopted a lot of suggestions and devices from our sort of friends back uh, on the Reddit and uh, on the YouTube platform as well. This is the two platform which I posted oftenly, right? And uh, if you are using for the fortune to do a lot of practicing and also you wanted to do some a little bit like a light material cut in the practicing in your backyard. So I think the former design would be a perfect choice because when they sort, this is like a one honey sort of 11 centimeters uh, group section. I mentioned that before. It's not easy when it weighs over 1200 grams. You will see because I kind of like a practice a lot when the 100 sword goes over 1200 grams you might find it a little bit hard to maneuver it it's not like a, it's not a maneuverable it's just you need to build up, build up your muscles and also you have to know practice and uh, to learn more technical positions all those different kind of skills so definitely this is a, not for entry level this is for at least you practice the sort before but definitely for this one this is a good recommendation for the entry level users to have it in your hand it's 1100 grams around so you can easily maneuver it to cut into the bottles those tatami mat no problem i'm excited to do the testing as well because it's just so fun i can do all the videos and the cutting kind of like a use at the opportunity to practice my cutting capabilities right one hand sword it's not easy i think this is a great opportunity to test it out this newly designed upgraded portion clip point portion right so let's see if the edge is still good as well and uh, if i can control it maneuver it as easy as before so let's test it out. So now I'm ready to do the testing. I uh, kind of like uh, add up a game a little bit to put some like uh, a drum bamboo inside of the tatami mat just to test the, the kind of like a limit of this blade to see how it uh, tempered and how it for how well it forged. This is the device from not a professional guy. Always wears those protection to, to protect as much parts as their body. So this is really important. Like what I did right there to protect your heart and also uh, your legs. So this is really important. So now it's time to do the testing. So <laughs> sharp. 
sharp. So, easy to control. I love those wind breaking sound. And uh, this is the live demo of the blade. You see, this is the drum bamboo inside of it. It's kind of like a stuck inside, but you can see the clean edge. So sharp right there. Now, I wiped it off. Still clean as ever, right? I'm moving up and down. Bamboo kind of like cracked inside, which I did a few, like a field attempt cutting in this direction. This is not easy. So that's why I think when you do all the practice, you need to ask the advice from the professional to give you those advices on your position and how you control your forces, especially how you can use your wrist to do the cuttings. Now, I'm doing it horizontally one more time. The bamboo, I think I use the most kind of like an awkward position to cut it like a horizontally, kind of like I use my forces. I think this is the, the best proof that uh, this sword can handle like a different impact, even though I don't think I cut it beautifully, but still it cuts so sharp, even though with the drum bamboo inside of it. I want you guys to see the cutting edge because when you have it, you cannot just safely use it, but of course you can. You don't have to do a lot of maintenance right after the cutting. So right after the tatami cuttings, and of course with the bamboo in it, let's see the edge sharpness. Man, this is so comfortable, smooth. See, now I'm doing it slowly from the impact area. See that? Beautiful. I'm not like uh, testing my skill here, but I just want to prove that this portion is sharp. All right, so let's see. Yeah. So this is the easy job, right? So I don't have to like show off all those uh, skills like I can do multiple cuttings all those kind of things but uh, I think the purpose of doing all those cutting tests is as a manufacturer I think I have the responsibility to test those flex strings how comfortable it can be used in the battle ready which would especially when I say the battle ready and also it can handle those uh, soft cuttings and also the heavy cutting as well because when you get it uh, in your home, you can safely use it. I think there's no better way to demonstrate how the blade is well forged and also to test, like when I say enhanced, not just enhance the blade itself, I have to enhance the blade tip right there. So when you do all those shakings, you gotta make sure there's no like a bendings, right? And also when especially bending over like a 45 degrees and uh, you don't have those like a uh, warping edge or have like uh, the blade itself uh, kind of like uh, disaligned, misaligned. Now, even after, now this is the blade right in, into the wood itself. So basically at least like a two millimeters, around like one millimeter into the wood, sharpened on the tip part as well. The flex strength is tested as well. So basically this is really a battle sword. Now I'm doing kind of like doing all these uh, kind of like uh, abusive testings on the blade itself. 
right? So now I want you to see how well it can be. So like what I said, as the manufacturer, we have those responsibilities, right? To test it out. Now it's still aligned together, right? Straight as you roll. This is the direct compare, right? So dry and bamboo, it cut so easily. Right there, no chipping as you roll, right? This is a close up. So really reliable sort. You see how it hold up right there. It's already cracked underneath it. So basically when you cut it right, it's pretty good. So it's more designed for the heavy duty cuttings, definitely. And also it's good if you have all those muscle up, you can definitely use it for the practice because it's a one-handed sword with over 1,280 grams. So this is definitely a good choice. Now with this upgraded um, scabbard, uh, not just make it a beautiful, not just make it a really a good collections. If you guys having those troubles like uh, picking the right sword for yourself, you can definitely talk to me and uh, you know, I will always be there. From our website, soldier.com, we can talk from there. And uh, until next time, my friend, stay tuned and stay sharp, and of course, stay safe. Bye-bye.